you from the Tourist Office of Spain in Chicago. And as your host, we are very glad to bring you this second webcast in our 2014 Spain webcast series. First of all, we'd like to thank you all for being here with us today. We can reassure you that coming up, we have a very interesting session live from Pamplona regarding everything you need to know for planning your meeting, incentive program, conference, or special event in Pamplona and the surrounding region of Navarra. Everyone's heard of Pamplona, especially around this time of year heading into July, in reference to the running of the Bulls or Hemingway. But there's so much more to it year-round. Its tourism resources and infrastructure, plus its quite unique venues, really make it a perfect destination for MICE programs from the U.S. market. We're about to find out why. In our session today titled MICE in Pamplona, Navarra, we have the honor of having with us four panelists from Pamplona representing various leading public and private organizations key speakers from some of the leading companies in Spain from the meetings and, and events industry. Before starting with our presentations, let me very quickly go over all four of our panelists speaking today. First, we'll hear from three Pamplona tourism leaders from different companies in a sort of team presentation. Then afterward, we'll hear from a tour operator whose business it is to take clients to the running of the Bulls. We have Silvia Aspilicueta, Director of Retail and Tourism from the Pamplona City Hall Tourist Board. Javier Lacunza. Javier is the General Manager of the Baluarte Conference and Performing Arts Center and Planetarium in Pamplona. Patricia Faile, General Manager of the AC Hotel Ciudad de Pamplona. And finally, after Silvia, Patricia, and Javier finish their presentation, we'll go to Maitanion Rubia, Director of Operations and Trade Sales of Running of the Bulls Travel Incorporated. So having introduced our four speakers, let's begin. Please, any time during the presentations, feel free to use the Q&A tab to ask any questions that occur to you for any of our speakers, and we'll be answering them at the very end of the session. Oh, hello, and good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Patricia, for the presentation. My name is Silvia Aspilicueta. We appreciate very much that you give us some time and to have the opportunity to let you know more about Pamplona and Navarra. Here with me are other members of our team who would like to say hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Patricia Fraile speaking. Um, I am the general manager at AC Hotels by Marriott in Pamplona. But today I'm here representing, um, I'm on behalf of the Association of Hotels in Pamplona. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us and letting us transmit how much we love our region. And hello, the last one. This is uh, Javier Lacunza from the Baluarte Conference Center. Thank you so much for uh, giving us your precious time in order to hear about the wonders of our region. So, the three of us will be explaining the different parts of our presentation today. We actually work all the promotion for the MICE segment in cooperation between the public sector with the private sector, that would be the local government and city hall, with the venue managers and hotel association. So we really wanted this webcast to be a reflection of that teamwork, which we think is important to provide a good destination experience for MICE. So why would you choose Navarra for your MICE event? Most of you probably have heard about us because of our famous festival, the San Fermines. And yes, we are the city that hosts every year this great celebration. But we want to show you today our great potential to be the destination for any type of MICE event. We offer a very good combination of traditions and historical heritage with modern infrastructures and services at a very high level. Pamplona is a mid-sized, green, accessible, safe city where we enjoy a high standard of living, and this quality of life is really perceived by the visitors, especially by the MICE visitors. Pamplona is a city where you feel well, you live very well, and of course you work well. We can be an alternative destination if, compared to bigger cities of Spain that you might know. I think we really can, can offer an, an, a good alternative with the guarantee that everything happens smoothly and with success. So, how to get here, where we are? We are located in the north of Spain, right in the, in the border with France, through the Pyrenees. The whole region of Navarre is quite small, has around 650,000 inhabitants, 
and the metropolitan area of Pamplona gathers half of that population, more or less. We have an airport with national connections, but our nearest international airport is Bilbao. It's only one hour and a half drive away. But we are also very well connected, both by train and, and, by, um, and by airplane with Madrid, the international airport to which most of your clients, we suppose, would arrive from the United States. The road network with our region, within our region and with the rest of northern Spain and southern France is, is quite excellent. So I would say uh, all the diversity you will find in Navarre that we will explain later on, all, all the different places, spots to go, uh, you can get there very easily. Everything would be no further than 100 kilometers away. So I think that's quite a, a convenient aspect. <clears throat> Concerning infrastructures, we can offer high quality venues of very different sizes, as Javier will later on explain in detail. But what I would like to point out now is the variety of the venues. Some of them are really unique. There are venues built in the 14th century, for example, being used, up to very modern constructions with all the new technologies at your disposal. I would also like to point out that most of these venues are within walkable distance, which is obviously very important for time saving once you are preparing a working, working event. When we ask ourselves about why Navarra, we must definitely highlight our gastronomy. Navarra offers visitors a taste of the past because the region has been able to conserve the culinary tradition that makes out of a meal a social event. It is important to highlight the product, the quality of the raw material itself. And when we say raw material, we talk about the beef, about the cheese. Of course, let yourself be seduced by the delights of our market gardens. For example, our amazing artichokes, the asparagus, uh, red piquillo peppers, going through dishes such as our famous ajuarriero, commonly cut with peppers, and all that accompanied by the best white, rose, and red wines of the region. The good thing about it also is the different options offered, from tapas or pinchos for those who want to enjoy our delicious cuisine in miniature and discover the charming streets of our city, uh, to the odd cuisine for those who rather prefer sophistication uh, more than tradition. Spain is one of the hottest gastronomic destinations all over Europe, and Navarra is definitely a reference. Why also in Navarra? Because of the history of a kingdom. The legacy left by history is huge. Navarra and its frontier location made medieval kings built uh, fortress squares, walled enclosures, watch towers and castles that provides our region and also Pamplona with an outstanding landscape of Roman towns, cozy Romanesque churches, Gothic monasteries and cathedrals, medieval towers, etc. The good thing is that guided visits and tours are regularly organized in main castles and fortresses and activities can be scheduled in these unique sceneries so visitors can enjoy and can be participants in these inherited wonders of our kingdom. Our nature. Uh, from the north to the south of Navarra, uh, it is just a distance of uh, approximately 150 kilometers. Uh, you can enjoy a kingdom of diversity. Navarra is a rich mosaic of landscapes. We start from the Pyrenees with the peaks and valleys, uh, the forest of Irati, going to the most rocky and arid desert land such as Bardena Reales uh, in the southeast side of the map. Our customers always uh, leave our hotels with a positive surprise of what they have unexpectedly discovered. They have discovered the biodiversity in such a small distance with such big number of activities to accomplish. Gate to the St. James Way. Since the 10th century, Navarra through Roncesvalles is the gate of the French Way of St. James, one of the most popular ways to reach Santiago de Compostela. This is very important to bear in mind when we talk about Pamplona as a very welcoming city. Uh, for so many years, we've been used to warmly receive over 50,000 uh, people a year from all over the world, from 80 different countries. This also explains our old tra uh, hotel tradition. The first NH hotel was born here and also became the first AC hotel, uh, now AC by Marriott, in Spain. Besides this, it is worth noting that Pamplona is inhabited by people from 130 different countries, 
All that gives an idea of how comfortable we feel welcoming visitors and granting guest satisfaction. Hello again. As Patricia was telling you, we have been traditionally a very welcoming region. Ever since the foundation of our city, we have been used to receive people from all parts of the world. We are very proud to say that right now, nowadays, every year in our tourist satisfaction surveys, the character and kindness of local people is one of the aspects best rated by the tourists. Our cultural agenda is very complete. We enjoy a large number of events uh, along the year where both the locals and the visitors can easily participate. We are the home of two universities, so we have quite a big student population, would be around 15,000 students, which make our city even more lively. Especially during the spring and summer, there are almost every weekend street animation activities open to the public in addition to all the cultural uh, entertainment performances organized by the auditorium and the city theater. Talking about the summer, of course, I am sure a lot of the audience is thinking about July, the moment when Pamplona becomes the host of the Universal Festival, the San Fermines. Every year, from July 6th to July 14th, our streets are the scenery of this great celebration of life. These are nine days in a row, more than 200 hours, with more than 250 activities included in the official program, apart of all the private activities going on in houses and, and clubs and everything. So we receive an estimated number of 200,000 visitors with an average stay of three days, and yet everything works properly. There is a lot of work in the backstage to coordinate logistics, security, health attention, etc. So let me tell you, we are sure as a city we know how to handle big groups. As you know, your famous Nobel Prize, Mr. Ernest Hemingway, fell in love with our San Fermines and our city. And we owe him the international knowledge of this festival. In fact, this festivity has its origins since the 12th century but it was since the publishing in 1926 of Hemingway's novel, The Sun Also Rises, that we started to get international attention. So why was Ernest Hemingway captured by Pamplona and Navarre and made him write about us and come back up to eight times more? Well, we think he valued very much the combination of the thrilling traditions, such as the running of the bulls, the people celebrating and sharing happiness around the streets in an explosion of music, white and red colors, with, at the same time, the possibility of enjoying peaceful, beautiful, and quiet places very near Pamplona, as only the landscape of, of Navarra can offer. Well, there, is, there will be a lot more to say about the San Fermines. It has nightlife, of course, but also music during the day, cultural activities, running of the bulls, religious traditions, family life, activities for kids, so on, so on. I can assure you that it's an unforgettable experience and a very special time to visit, to visit us. But I guess my panel later on is going to give you more details about that, so I, I leave the San Fermines topic there. So what happens uh, the rest of the year? These nine days are very special, but I can tell you the rest of the year is also very special in another sense. We are a quiet, comfortable, and working city with a prosperous industry and service sector. We enjoy very high results in most of the regular socioeconomic indicators. Right now, we have the lowest unemployment rate of Spain, one of the highest rent per inhabitant, so, and so forth. So we have a very strong health system, both public and, and private, in part due to the fact that we have one of the most prestigious medical schools in Europe. The private university clinic receives patients from all over the world, and their Applied Medicine Investigation Center, located also here, provides the university with the latest know-how and expertise in medical assistance. The middle size and economic prosperity makes us a very safe city in all these areas, and we are also very strong in environmental policies. Even if the image you might have in your mind about us is red, according to what you see on TV when you have the San Fermines Festival, we are actually very green, a green city. We have the highest ratio of, of Spain of green square meter per person. So in every part of the city, you're near a big, beautiful park. We participate 
in the Arbor Compromise, that is the European City Network for Sustainability. So we implement policies to stay green and even improve in that sense. In fact, all the region is very committed to environmental and sustainable development. We have a very strong presence in the renewable energies. This would be the, one of our main experts, the engineering regarding renewable energies. Our region is one of the smallest in Spain in terms of size, but we are on the top of the list in terms of exports. So that not only gives us good economic results, but also opens us to the world in all senses. It makes us prepared to work with the world. There has been a very strong investment in the recent years in the city to restore a rich monument heritage. We have completely restored and, and made walkable the citadel and the fortification system, which is one of the best examples of military architecture of the Renaissance. We have restored and prepared a 16th century palace into a civic center right in the city center. We have the entire antique city center with no traffic, only less pedestrian spaces. In summary, I would say we maintain our strong historical heritage, but very ready to look at the future and, and to work for the future. According to what Sylvia has said, I'd like to highlight the word green. Our clients really enjoy walking around the city, visiting and practicing sports in our parks, and they really appreciate that after a hard journey at work. I would even suggest enhancing uh, what Sylvia mentioned, you are not near a big beautiful park, but you almost live in a park. It's very common between our clients to ask for advice for jogging tours such as Vuelta del Castillo, university surroundings, the citadel, or even the old part of the city. This is where sustainability and safety play a key role. In terms of accommodation, we feel very proud of the level of accommodation that we offer, not just because of the variety, but also because of the quality. Firstly, the variety. There are over 2,500 rooms distributed in 36 establishments, going from one-star hotels up to five-star hotels, where the biggest range is within three and four-star hotels, which are ideal for mice. The slide that you are going to see now uh, offers some information about hotels, but you can get all the information um, in our website, which is at the end of the presentation. It's worth to say that out of these rooms, around 1,000, divided in 15 hotels approximately, and at a walking distance from the main venues. Several hotels are located less than five minutes from Baluarte Conference Center. And talking about quality, we can boast about the highest standards of maintenance and refurbishment of our hotels. We invest in keeping them up to date. Pamplona is in the position number 19 in terms of, of sites in Spain. However, three out of the top 25 trip advisor hotels are located in Pamplona, La Perla, Alma Muga de Veloso, and Castillo de Gorray. Although it is less related to mice, we might also mention that we are among the first ones in investing in rural accommodation. Actually, in just 20 minutes' drive, you are able to sleep and enjoy a completely different landscape. So thanks to Sylvia and Patricia, we have had a very good uh, overview of what the city can offer as a destination. And now it's time to look at uh, the uh, different uh, MICE venues that we, can, that we can use for hosting all sorts of events. We will start by the key cornerstone in our strategy, that's Baluarte Conference Center, which I'm uh, um, responsible for. It was a, it's a building built in 2003 uh, in an overall uh, cost project of uh, 78 million euros. It has uh, hosted uh, more than uh, 3 to 5 million visitors on uh, 10 years of operation in all sorts of performing art shows, congresses, conventions, fairs and exhibitions. We typically work with regional, national and international customers with an average revenue of 6 million euros per year. In 2013, just to give you an indication, we hosted 186 performing art shows, 13 fairs, 6 exhibitions and 125 events ranging from congresses to conventions, seminars and others. Same as the city, we work with the top quality um, requirements and certifications. We are ISO 9001 certified for quality and processes, ISO 14001 uh, for environmental and uh, since 2013, we, we have been awarded the Biosphere Events uh, Certification, awarded by UNESCO, 
uh, that uh, contains all our sustainability and corporate social responsibility policies. Uh, Baluarte in the city has a pretty much privileged location. On one side, we had the immense park of the citadel. That's, uh, well, one of the best examples, as Silvia mentioned before, of the defensive uh, Renaissance architecture in, in Europe. It's at 280,000 square meters, so quite a big park. And our third floor and rooftop uh, terrace that we use typically for congresses and meetings have quite a breathtaking overview on, on the park. On the other side, the modernist uh, extension of the city, of the old quarter, and the old quarter itself, where uh, we have the main area for shopping, for bars, for restaurants, uh, as I mentioned before, just a couple of minutes of walking distance from the door of Baluarte. In terms of transfers to and from Baluarte, thanks to it, uh, its privileged position, we have up to 1,000 rooms of hotels that can be handled with no need of transportation. Many of, of these hotels can be easily reached on foot on a radius of just 10 minutes. Also, the transfer from the airport and the railway station uh, is pretty straightforward with just a 10-12 minutes uh, driving transfer. Going inside the building, um, Baluarte can host events from very small sizes with rooms and services adapted to these sort of events to events in the range of thousands. The overall exhibition surface is uh, around 6,000 meter, square meters and uh, it makes it easy to accommodate commercial exhibition in congresses and conventions, fairs of services, retail market or even small machinery. Logistics of the, of the building are very well designed for easing all sorts of loading and loading and construction operations. We have a very flexible scheme for services with exclusivity only in cleaning, security and catering services, allowing the different organizer that bring in their own uh, audiovisual stage or any other services required on their own. Else, we can also provide turnkey services. We are promoters of mainly performing our shows, so we typically rent space, but when it comes to our shows, we promote through our own cultural foundation. We deliver a carefully selected session of, sh of shows. We do opera, we do ballet, we do classical and modern music, theater, always with top quality companies and productions at an international level. Our catering services is delivered by Mark Restaurant, that was a one-star Michelin re re uh, hotel, um, restaurant awarded uh, in the south of Navarra, and um, they created Meyer Catering, delivering uh, catering services at the national level and capable of delivering to any standards of quality in, and also in terms of size. Uh, in slide 21, we can see uh, a bit of a detailed description of the, um, of the uh, uh, different uh, rooms and areas in the Baluarte Conference Center. We have two main auditoria, the big one with 1,000, almost uh, 1,600 uh, seats and 450 for the chamber hall. We have up to 21 different spaces in three separate areas within the building. Uh, as I said before, we have uh, an overall exhibition area of 6,000 square meters divided between the main exhibition hall of 3,000 square meters together with the mezzanine. And what is uh, one of the uh, main aspects of the building, we have an underground exhibition hall of almost 2,000 2, square meters with 100 meters of the 16th century uh, city walls integrated into it, which make it quite a unique place for hosting events. That's about it for Baluarte. We will now navigate through uh, some other sites. Uh, first one, uh, Colegio de Medicos, is a, is a wonderful palace of the middle of the 20th century. It hosts around uh, 60 events per year and is, and is composed by 12 different spaces that can host meetings, banquets and events for up to typically uh, 300 people. As it couldn't be different, we have Baluarte located in front of the Citadel Park, but oh surprise, Colegio de Medicos is also located in a park. That's this time the Media Luna Park with a beautiful view over the river that uh, crosses Pamplona River Arga. Next one is the, the Navarre Fairground, Srefena. Uh, it's a 10,000 square meters exhibition surface distributed in three pavilions over 27,000 square meters plot of land. 
Uh, Refena offers turnkey services with their own company, building, stands, boots, and any construction needed, demanded for the event. It's the perfect complement for the uh, small fairs that happen in Baluarte with a bigger space that can cope with uh, demands for car presentations and fairs requiring more, more space. Refena is owned by the same company that runs Baluarte, but is in this case privately managed. Refena also offers restaurants, cafeteria and catering services and also has a space dedicated for carting suitable for groups of up to 20 people running simultaneously. And here we come to uh, possibly the most unique site for mice in the city. Yes, the cathedral can be used also for events and two areas within the cathedral can be rented for conference, events and banquets. The refectory and the beautiful 15th century Gothic cloister that is among, if not the first, most beautiful cloister in Europe. The refectory was used by the priest in charge of the cathedral for centuries, but it was also used by the different kings of Navarre for reception with the monarchs of the different uh, European kingdoms during the Middle Age. So I would say that if you want to feel like a king, possibly this is the right spot. On top of that, the entire cathedral and its surrounding areas have been reconverted to the permanent Occident exhibition, awarded several international prizes as best exhibition in the world, such as New York Core 77 in, uh, in New York and FX in London. Next site is the planetarium that, of course, is in the middle of a park. This time is the Yamaguchi Park, uh, in honor to our sister city in Japan, Yamaguchi. It's composed of six different spaces and 600 square meters of exhibition area that make this an ideal site for events of up to 300 people. Planetarium has total flexibility in terms of service delivery, and it has a very unique feature. All the full dome audiovisual production, which is what we project in the dome, which is the biggest one in Spain, 20 meters diameter, is done home, which means that we create our own scientific documentaries and we distribute, the, we distribute them all over the world. It's a very high quality productions, and that allows for full customizations of full dome projections also for corporate and associate, associative uh, market customers. So we can tailor-made uh, for you, for organizers, any sort of images required for enriching your event. Planetarium is also run by the same company that runs Baluarte that I am responsible for. And finally, we go to the latest addition to the MICE portfolio of the city. Uh, the Citadel's main hall sits in the middle of the Citadel Park. Um, you can actually have the peace and quietness in the middle of the city center. It's just uh, three minutes walking from the old quarter, from the groovy old quarter, where you have all your shopping and the bars and the restaurants. And actually, from the Citadel's main hall, you can just hear the birds. That's a perfect complement for events happening in, in, in Baluarte, such as reception for congresses or small banquets. So that is all for me. I hope that um, I managed to uh, explain a little bit what our main sites for events. Um, let me say that on top of this, we would have um, hotels with their own uh, rooms also suitable for events. But uh, we have tried to describe a little bit uh, what could make a difference in terms of, um, of uh, historical heritage and new infrastructures for uh, my demands. So thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Sylvia, Patricia, and Javier. Again, if, if you yes. have any questions for either of the three of them, use the Q&A tab, and we'll keep the questions in a queue, and they'll answer them at the end. So now we're going to hear from Maitane Onrubia of Running of the Bulls Travel Incorporated. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, well, I'm Maitana Rubia. I'm representing uh, Running of the Bulls Incorporated. Um, this is the most uh, uh, exclusive and well-known company to, that organized unique uh, trips uh, to Pamplona during the Running of the Bulls. Here we have uh, Mark, Regalby, Mark Herman Regalby. He is the founder of the company. He ran the company in 2006, and I joined the company in 2011 when I came to the U.S. Both uh, love Pamplona 
and our goal is to offer each client a unique experience in Pamplona like a local. Our team uh, is located around the world, so we have uh, different offices in Spain, in Hong Kong, and also here in U.S. Uh, the main office is in Miami, and I'm uh, based in Dallas, Texas, and also we have another team in Arizona. Uh, all of us are coming to Pamplona during the festival to take care of all our clients. So, well, um, I would like to introduce you a little bit uh, more the, the festival of San Fermin. Um, Pamplona is a small city um, considered uh, during in July uh, the city that uh, hosts uh, one of the best festivals in the world. And this is a very religious and, and traditional festival uh, honoring San Fermin. So as Sylvia uh, commented before, uh, this festival was started during the Middle Age, but uh, uh, it was Ernest Hemingway who introduced the festival around the world. So thanks to him, um, every year uh, Pamplona is ready to receive more than one million people uh, during the nine days. The Festival of San Fermin uh, actually happens uh, from July 6th to July 14th. On July 6th, we have the opening ceremonies, the Chupinazo, and July 14th uh, take place the Pobre de Mi, or closing ceremonies. But one of the most uh, important and well-known events we have is the El Encierro, or the actual running of it. Um, uh, it happens every day from July 7th to July 14th at 8 a.m. and consists in, in six bulls running uh, along 849 meters to arrive from the Corrales uh, of Santo Domingo uh, to the Bull Ring of Pompon. Uh, now that you are more familiar with the festival and the city, I would like to introduce you our hospitality, hospitality services. Uh, we can come to all desires of your clients to have in Pamplona. So uh, the most um, interesting options to consider is that we can organize the auto reservations the private transfers for everywhere um, in Spain to Pamplona. Uh, we have uh, very beautiful terraces and balconies to watch uh, the opening and closing ceremonies, also the fireworks from the Baluarte, um, uh, El Encierro, or the Bull Run, and also the procession of San Fermín. Also, we can manage um, bullfight tickets, uh, restaurant reservations, uh, VIP parties, and very beautiful private tours to know more about the rest of Navarra, from to go to wineries and also uh, bull farms and uh, uh, many, many other ideas. Um, well, uh, I would like to talk about uh, our accommodation. We only work with the best hotels. We, we have, um, we work with three, four, and five star hotels in Pamplona. Uh, some of them are located in the city center um, to, if you have a client that wants to enjoy the festival and be in the middle of the action, this is the best option. But also we have another option, uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes walking or by car from, from Pamplona Old Town. So it's perfect if uh, your clients want to play golf, go to the spa, or just to have a meeting. Um, so that's our, the, the main idea. Um, also, uh, we have um, very uh, nice private spots to to enjoy the the whole festival. For example, we have the two VIP terraces. They are the only two terraces just in front of the town hall of Pamplona. We bring the catering there. We make a very beautiful um, party. We can organize a wine taste and. For example, for the Tupinazo, for the opening ceremonies, we celebrate every July 6th a VIP party with uh, pinchos that are tapas uh, with wine and champagne uh, just for 50 people. But also we have a very premium balcony um, uh, in, in the plaza, in, in the town, town hall square, um, to host uh, private, um, private parties as well. Uh, another option is to do it uh, to, to attend to the Pobre de Mi, is the closing ceremonies. It happened on July 14th. It's a really beautiful event. It's a candle event um, to celebrate that the festival uh, uh, ends and also that, that there are only one year less left to to start the festival as well. 
So we have a really nice wine and champagne party, but we can create um, any party you, you need. Uh, one of our best um, uh, items we have are our balconies. We have balconies along the whole bull run um, in Santo Domingo Street, Mercaderes, and also Estafeta. We have uh, different levels and size of balconies. Uh, to host any kind of group. Um, we have uh, balconies in level one to be very close to the bulls and runners. And also we have um, balconies in the second first and third floor uh, to have uh, large views. Um, if, uh, if your clients want to be in a safe uh, place and of course don't want to run, uh, I think that this is the best and the correct way to, to watch the LMCL. Um Another um, important event that takes place every uh, day in Pamplona from July 5th to July 14th uh, are the bullfights. It's a very traditional uh, event uh, that happens every evening, and we also can organize uh, tickets uh, in different levels of the Plaza de Tours. Well, those are the main important um, events. But uh, during the festival, as we commented before, there are uh, a lot of um, a lot of events, uh, more than 200 uh, cultural events, more friendly, uh, family friendly, and uh, events during the day. We have concerts. We we have um, the procession of San Fermin on July uh, 7th. Also, we organize a very nice dinners uh, at Baluarte. Is um, we have we call the we name it the quadrilla dinner. It's a very um, it's a very um, traditional flavor uh, created uh, created uh, that um, Chef Enrique Martinez created uh, for us. And right after the dinner, we are going to the to the terrace of Baluarte to enjoy the fireworks with an excellent uh, Navarra wine. Um, also, we, as, as we commented before, we can organize um, private tours, for example, to make a lounge in in the um, in a winery vineyard, or also to have a party in a boar farm. Um, besides this, we also organize um, meals in very different uh, restaurants of Pamplona. We have a sophisticated restaurants. Um, that uh, that holds uh, Michelin stars, and also we we have um, restaurants very authentic and traditional. Uh, for example, um, a cedar house where your clients can go have a really nice dinner with a chuleton is a, a very big uh, steak, and then uh, drink uh, cedar dearly from the barrels. So this is something that is very unique and very different. Um, before um, finish the presentation, I would like to show you how we work. It's very easy. It's just um, uh, you you have to send us an email or, or contact us by phone, explain us uh, what uh, your client or, or you are looking for. Um, we are going to create a very special um, itinerary just for you. We can do everything a la carte if you have ideas that you want to organize or if you want to visit a near village from from Pamplona, we can organize that too. And when everything is okay um, and your clients are going to be in Pamplona, uh, one, well, uh, our team will be there to be sure that everything is perfect and spend the time with your clients if you need. So thank you everyone for, for joining us today. And if you need more information for the running of the bulls, you can visit our website, it's runningofthebulls.com, and you can contact me directly or, or contact with the rest of our team, and we will be happy to, to host you in Pamplona this year or next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you once again, everybody, for such an excellent webinar. I'm sure our audience today has learned a lot about Pamplona and the surrounding region of Navarra. Now we're ready to go to the questions. We've been getting some questions in here, and I'm going to start with the first one. And this one could be answered by, I think, by, by any of you. And it is, could you, could you talk more about the local food? Is there a signature dish, one unique to Pamplona? 
So Sylvia, Patricia, Javier, or Maitani, any one of you would like to answer that one? That would be that would be wonderful. Is there a signature dish, one unique to Pamplona? We actually already sent a written answer, but yes, we would like to explain a little bit more because actually there's very, very different dishes that would be special of this area, but especially we would point out the vegetables in any kind of preparation. But a typical dish would be the menestra de verduras, which is a vegetable stew. Also the asparagus with very different preparation. Right now the springtime is, is the, the best time to, to have them. Another main dish would be a juarriero, which is a dish prepared with cod and red peppers. Also, mm, nice to mention is our wines, the local wines, which the Rosé wine in Navarra is one of the most renowned in Spain. Actually, there will be so many variety and options that mm, I think th this is really a strong point of our destination. We, we are really sure that people enjoy our gastronomy a lot. We also have uh, the river fish, the trout with ham, different uh, preparations of lamb. I, I could be I could here. <laughs> A long time talking about our food, so I, I really suggest in general the vegetables. I think it's okay. important to say regarding food that um, uh, we can cover all fronts. So from, from tapas and pinchos, which is this kind of small cuisine that, that can get very sophisticated as well, to restaurants of uh, hot cuisine. We do have uh, Michelin stars uh, restaurants, but we also have a variety of, uh, let's call them, restaurants really value for money restaurants uh, in which for a price of 15 to 20 euros you can you can have a, a delicious uh, three courses meal mm -hmm. excellent okay well thank you very much now we're going on to our next question and that is the um, the attendee says thank you for this interesting presentation I was wondering if there are any Christmas markets Mercados de Navidad in your area? Uh, yes, again, we again. do have a okay. uh, yes, we, we do have a um, traditional Christmas market in the Plaza del Castillo in the city center. But actually, we do have some other farmer markets and different uh, artisan artisans market along the year. So especially in the spring and the summer, there are several uh, markets. Uh, sometimes it's specialized in cheese or in, in artisans of different ways and books. There's, it's quite a lively city in terms of things going on on the street. Mm -hmm. A very typical thing during the Christmas period is what we call the exhibition of Belenes. Belenes is a tradition from the very old times in Spain, which essentially is building with cardboard and, and, and different figures. Uh, it's all uh, hands, uh, a hands job, right? Um, the recreation of the of the birth of uh, Jesus Christ, and uh, we have an exhibition of almost uh, 1,500 square meters with the local association that does Belenes. This is an entire um, Spanish tradition that covers the entire territory, but it has a very very strong tradition here in Navarra. So that's also something you can you can do and enjoy during the Christmas period. Uh, seeing nativity scenes around town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and what are the dates of the markets and of the Christmas? I, because in, in Spain, you celebrate Three Kings Day as the main, the main Christmas celebration, which is which is January sixth. And so, what are the dates, more or less, of Chris, of the Christmas markets? Yes, the the Christmas campaign we would say would start around uh, December the fifteenth, more or less, mid 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 December. Uh, along all the Christmas time up to the 6th of, of January, January the 6th or 7th. So actually a part of the market, there's all the, the Christmas lighting in the city, the Belenes that Javier explained, and there's a lot of, of carol singing going on on the streets and kind of a lot of activity. So it, it would be a good time of the year to come visit. What is a, a very particular tradition of Pamplona is in, in the last day of the year, December the 31st, year um, uh, normally people use, uh, 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 we make a custom uh, party uh, on the street, so everybody goes uh, with a different costume, uh, dressing like any sort of historical personage or, or whatever, football player. Everybody, everybody is dressing decent, uh, differently. So possibly we are speaking about the biggest carnival party 
Uh, and that's pretty unique on Pamplona. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Oh, nice. That sounds great. Okay, so our next question is, one million people over nine days for running of the bulls. How many are from the U.S.? Yeah, uh, well, we only manage estimations because actually it's such an open party where not everybody that is coming here is staying in the, in the hotels of the city. They, they stay in different locations and, and also in, in friends' houses. So we manage only estimations. But I would say that we are estimating around 10% of the visitors that come from elsewhere are from the U.S. Normally, we do have a lot more, um, a lot more visitors from Europe, but in this time of the year, the number of visitors from the U.S. increases significantly. Actually, the, the million people would be around 200,000 people, but with an average stay of three days, that would make up this, this million along the week. So we manage estimations. I couldn't give a, an exact number, but it, it would be around 10% of the, of the foreign visitors. Mm, okay. That, that's quite a lot. Yes. Okay. I think and I can say that the, the North Americans and love uh, the San Fermines, and this is an, inc an increasing number of visitors from, from the U.S., which we welcome very much. <laughs> okay. And our next question, what is the maximum hotel capacity in the city for a Congress or conference? Um, as, as we said before, if we talk about the city, just yes, Pamplona, we have around 2,500 rooms uh, in 36 establishments. I don't know if you want the information about yes, Pamplona or Navarra I and mean, the region in general. Well, uh, the, the, question, the person who a asked the question is, is talking about the city itself, so really just Pamplona. If we talk about the city, it's around 2,500 rooms. The important thing that we highlighted during the presentation, and I think that it's important to highlight right now, is the, 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 how close they are to the main venues. This is very right. important. We have a walking distance between five minutes and or one minute and, and, and ten minutes, fifteen minutes maximum. That's it's, it's important to say, Patricia, also that uh, for us, um, speaking about the city, we have transfer of just twenty minutes drive to rural areas, which uh, comparing to other cities, you would in twenty minutes drive you would stay within the city, right? At that right. point, also for bigger events. Uh, we can we can bring in uh, rural accommodation. We have a very dense network of rural accommodation, and many in many cases those are villages just 15, 20 minutes away drive from the main city center. So that That's can right. also be taken into account. We have had uh, events uh, with 3,000, 3,500 people, and we have managed to successfully accommodate them as well. Okay, wonderful. All right, and. So our next question would be for Baluarte, and that is, I think I read somewhere something about a huge flamenco festival taking place there this year. Is that true? If so, when, and is it actually at Baluarte? Yes, that's right. It's, uh, well, it's a festival that is going to uh, well, be happening in the entire city, but it's true that the two main stages of the festival are going to be in Baluarte. That's between the 26th of August and 31st of August. It's going to be six days with the biggest names of, uh, of flamenco. Uh, practically all of them are in there. Uh, together with Bienal de Sevilla, that happens every two years, this is the biggest festival of flamenco. And, and it's important to note that uh, Maestro Sabicas, the person, the, 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 the musician that was responsible for an entire change and an entire revolution in the way of playing the flamenco guitar was, was born here in Pamplona. And, and the oh. festival has been uh, thought and designed uh, following his, his, um, his memory. Uh, he was famous, very famous in New York during, uh, practically speaking, 50 years of, of his life. And, and we believe also this can be very appealing for, for American people that witnessed the, the maestro uh, playing the guitar in places such as uh, Carnegie Hall, for instance, for many, many years. Wow, that sounds fantastic. Um, do you do you have a website for that? Yeah, it's uh, the, the festival is called Flamenco on Fire. The term in English 
uh, was specifically designed for understanding that there would be an international interest in this festival. And uh, the, the web page is www.flamencoonfire.org. Okay, fantastic. Flamencoonfire.org. Wonderful. Thank you. And our next question here would be for probably for the Pamplona City Hall Tourist Board. And that is, it says, many of the programs our company puts together involve motorsports. Do you have a motorsports racetrack in this area? Well, thank you very much for that question. It's a very good question. Um, actually, I will let Javier talk about it because he, he's also responsible for a great um, race racing uh, circuit that he will explain you about that. Yeah, in fact, we have a, a very modern infrastructure. It's also the uh, same way as Refena. It's owned by our company, but it's uh, run uh, privately. Uh, it's 40 kilometers away in the highway, just 33 minutes uh, away driving from, from the center of Pamplona. And it's a very, very modern uh, motorsport infrastructure. We have the main track of almost four kilometers, but we also have uh, the sliding driving uh, area. We have a four by four uh, tracking rail, and uh, we have the karting area as well. Um, the whole uh, the whole area has also an, a, a space, a specific building for conventions and meetings. So it was really designed from scratch uh, out of, uh, it was year 2006-2007, to make it apart from a, a racing circuit, a place for, for events. Uh, so we have had very important presentations with uh, worldwide attendance um, happening in, in the circuit of Navarra. And uh, I think one of the, the best uh, um, feedbacks that I received from, from that event was from the organizer that was coming from Germany, was how easy it was to work with us because we are a small region and sometimes being small has very good advantages. Mm -hmm. Okay, very, very interesting. And let's see, our next question here. Can you tell me a little bit more about accessibility from the U.S.? How easy it is to get from Chicago to Pamplona, for in instance, or New York to Pamplona? Well, uh, Patricia, I would say that's easier than it looks because really the, uh, there are nonstop flights daily from Chicago and from New York and from other U.S. gateways into Madrid. You fly during the night, you arrive early in the next morning, and there's a morning connection from Madrid to Pamplona that just takes around 50 minutes. So you, you, really, you can leave the States, if you are in the Eastern Coast, you can leave the States the night before and be in Pamplona uh, ready to, to, to start around 10 a.m. the following morning. I mean, there would be quite other connections uh, with other airports, nearby airports or through Europe, of course, but I would say that would be the easiest way to, to come through Madrid. That's, that's wonderful. That's really, really fast. Well, and also, as you said earlier in your presentation, you pointed out how close you are to Bilbao. Yes, and yes. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think some people don't realize you're extremely close to Bilbao, so that also makes it very easy if you're connecting from elsewhere. And you're a short train ride away from Barcelona and from, from Madrid. Madrid, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, well, in fact, any, anyways, even if you have to come through a second connection via Madrid or Bilbao, all that time you're going to save it later on because here, now you, once you're in Pamplona, the distances are so small and you actually save all that time. And during the, during the, um, the, the stay for work, you don't need transfers anymore. You go, just go walk into the places. So. That kind of compensates that second flight you might have, but I think once you're in a, in a long flight, uh, 50 minutes more is <laughs> it's n nothing, I, I would say. Right, that's mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. Okay. And then this question is for Running of the Bulls Travel, because they're asking, what's the largest size incentive group we can take to the Running of the Bulls through your company? Maitane? Yes. Um yeah. Um, well, uh, we are um, we organize almost any kind of, uh, of size of group. Um, the best um, the best group we can manage is uh, less than 500 uh, people, and 
is uh, well, we can organize the um, whole itinerary for them. There, uh, we can host parties. If if they have a um, a largest group, we can do that. But we need to to know with uh, many time in advance to manage all balconies and book flight tickets and also the auto reservation because uh, the running of the bus, uh, the, the San Fermin Festival, is like the high season in Pamplona. So we need to get everything very, very well um, organized. Oh, okay. And so how far in advance would you recommend booking? Uh, we recommend to book in, uh, start uh, to, to book uh, in August more or less. August to December is the best time to, to book if you, if uh, you are looking for the premium spots and, and the best accommodation. Any time between August and December for the following July? For large, yeah, for large groups are, are the best time for that. Okay. Okay. And then, Okay, so then our, our next question is, in your presentation, someone mentioned the universities and a famous hospital. Would you say that Pamplona is known for medical tourism? Well, uh, Pamplona, especially the, the private hospital, the Clinica Universitaria, uh, is receiving 70,000 um, uh, patients. Uh, from from the different places, national and international uh, customers of the hospital per year. So um, we are in the process of uh, evolving this that is already a success story in terms of of recognition and and, and, and receiving uh, patients to a more uh, international level. So uh, we have plans for expanding towards uh, different markets: Russia, uh, United States. Uh, more distant markets than the typical European market that up to now uh, we have uh, absorbed. So there's definitely uh, an, uh, work in this area, and it has a lot to do with the same uh, with the same work that we are doing on the mice markets because uh, many of the features of this type of tourism uh, can be shared in terms of uh, oh, product development yeah. and services development. There are a lot of common areas. I would add to what Javier said that, uh, especially, we, yes, we are increasing our position or, or improving our position in terms of medical tourism. But actually, the medical, active, the sanitary sector is the the most um, present in our mice events. We are the strongest activity, the most number of activities in mice in Pamplona is related to the sanitary system. Um, actually, oh. one of the venues we, we mentioned, the, the Colegio de Medicos, is the Navarra Asso Medical Association. So we already receive a lot of doctors and of, of different specialities in the, in the MICE events, but now what we want to improve and increase is the number of, of medical tourists of the markets we, we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and um, I would just like to state here uh, before we go on to our next question that if anybody has any further questions or wants to follow up, please please follow up through our office, Chicago at tourspain.es, and we will pass the questions to the appropriate party. And I think we're running out of time. So again, thank you very much, everybody. This webinar will be archived online on the Tourist Offices, uh, Tourist Offices of Spain YouTube channel and also in our Spain Virtual Event Center. And as an event attendee, you'll get an email coming to the email address where you registered where you'll get instructions how you can listen to this online again. And I'd like to reiterate, if you've got further questions for anyone here, please email Chicago at Spain. Dot es. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.